Hi everybody, my name is Adam. Today we're going to be looking at an older image and we're going to be restoring it using noise reduction and frequency separation. So this image was sent to me um, by somebody who was an attendee of the workshop and, uh, and was just looking to sort of uh, break down how to uh, better this image, how to restore it, how to get rid of some of these scratch marks. So that's what we're going to do today. Also, I just want to thank the user for sending this in. This was a really good image uh, and really exemplary of what we're going to be discussing today. This image represents a perfect example of one that can be restored in edit mode. We're going to start by duplicating our image because we're going to make a destructive adjustment to the layer. Having a duplicate allows us to go back if we need to. Next, we're going to add a noise reduction layer to the top of our layer order. This noise reduction layer should be increased until most, if not all, of the specs on our image are softened. If we maximize luminance, you can see that they have been removed and much of the detail on the image has been preserved. So now we can focus on the major elements rather than the minor ones. If we zoom in, we can see where the cleanup needs to occur. On our duplicated image, we're going to right click it. Select Frequency Separation from the drop-down. Frequency Separation splits our image into two separate images. One that is a layer that contains the color, and another is a layer that contains texture, essentially turning them into a high-pass and a low-pass layer. This is very important for restoring photos. We'll use the automatic settings. We don't need to change anything. I'm now going to rename these layers so they are easier to understand. Texture uh, is going to be high pass. A color is going to be low pass. We need to fix the low pass layer first. We're going to hide the high pass layer so it looks like our image is blurry. Our goal here is to further blur any spot or speck that appears on our image. So we're going to click on the blur filter. Within the blur filter, we will use the brush tool. Let's apply a Gaussian blur to any larger spot on the clothing. Most of the spots are on the gentleman's jacket. I can reduce the nib width with either the scroll wheel on my mouse or the nib slider that is located here. I'll now click Done. Next, we have to get rid of this little scratch that appears next to their hands. This is quite easy to do. I'll open up the same low pass layer, but this time I'm going to be opening it up in the repair filter instead of blur. I'll zoom into the scratch. I'm going to try the Smart Erase tool. If Smart Erase doesn't work in your instance, what you can do is use the Blended Clone tool. In this case, however, it seems to have worked really well. I'm going to click Done again. Let's now unhide the high pass layer and work on it. I'm going to open up the high pass layer in the same repair tool. Let's start with that scratch again. We'll once again use the Smart Erase tool. Keep in mind that we're just editing the texture layer now. So when we make any smart erases, they're only impacting the high pass layer, which again, this is uh, interacting with the texture. If we want, we can also hide the low pass layer to see exactly what we're removing. Noted that if we do this, uh, it might be best for us to zoom in further so we can see the differences. I'm just using the smart erase tool here and clicking on anything I want to remove. Try to remove as much as you can with the tool. I'll speed this process up slightly. There you have it. So what we've done here is we've added a noise reduction adjustment layer with high luminance. We then made a frequency separation adjustment to our image splitting our layer into a high-pass layer and a low-pass layer. On the low-pass layer, we blurred out any of these color areas that indicated that there was a scratch or some sort of film grain. 
on our high pass layer, what we've done is we've just used the Smart Erase tool. Some of you might have found more success using the Blended Clone tool. And then we've just gone in and we've removed those little elements. Please like this video, subscribe and click the bell icon. And most importantly, please comment with suggestions of what you'd like me to cover next. Take care.